Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about the render settings for the iRay Render plugin. It's good to be familiar with these in order to be able to produce the most effective and realistic renders for your Character Creator 3 characters and scenes. Let's start off by reviewing the Auto Update feature. You can see that we have it activated right here, so let's go ahead and give our scene a quick preview. Notice that you can also activate the Auto Update feature from the toolbar as well. As you may recall, whenever you rotate or move the camera in your viewport, the Auto Update feature will update the angle of your preview render as well. This is also true if we update anything else. For example, if we adjust the color parameters of our base texture map for our character's jacket, you'll see the render will automatically start updating with the new values. There are a couple of other basic render settings here which we'll talk about a little later on as well, including things like denoise and preview size. We're not going to cover any of the compositing elements in this tutorial, but we will have another tutorial which goes into full detail on these features, so stay tuned. Let's take a quick look at preview size now. The default preview size is the frame size, which corresponds directly with the frame size of our viewport. You'll notice that if we resize this, that our preview will update as well. We have a separate tutorial which covers the UI of the preview window, I'll provide a link in the description for that. If you lock the ratio, you can enter in a custom value and see the preview window update once more. If your render seems a bit smaller, make sure that you select the right zoom level that you want from the zoom level menu. Keep in mind that a higher preview resolution will result in a longer preview time. I'll just restore to viewport resolution size and let's take a look now at the preview selected feature. You can see that there is also a toolbar menu option for this as well. If we select it, only the item that we have in the list will be rendered. In this case, it's the sky background. We can add items to the list by selecting them in the viewport and then using the little add icon on the top right of the selection list. So you can have a ghost wearing a jacket, or if you add more items into the selection list, you can gradually begin to construct a person. Notice that every time you add something, the preview window will be auto-updated as expected. Let's talk about the visual enhancements now. GI bounces essentially dictates how many light bounces you want to calculate. A higher GI bounce value will have a higher quality render, but will also take more resources to calculate. You can see here a slight difference in the iris area with a GI bounce value of 8 versus 16, whereas with a value of 4, you're going to start seeing some glaring issues with the shadows. Using a higher IBL value in your scene can help to avoid these high contrast issues around the eyes as you see here. In this case, a higher GI bounce value will brighten up the general ambiance. Let's now take a look at a comparison using the denoise feature. In our initial render, you can notice that there appears to be a bit of greeniness, particularly on the skin and the shadow areas. If we activate the denoise option, you can notice right away that a lot of the greeniness is smoothed out, particularly in the areas with shadow. However, keep in mind to use this feature conservatively, as sometimes details such as hair tips may be blurred out slightly as well. Shadow acne, it's not only for teenagers anymore. Actually, it's a feature that allows you to smooth out jagged and unsightly edges of high contrast shadow. In this example, you can see the unnatural looking edges and how they get smoothed out nicely once we activate the Eliminate Shadow Acne feature. If you find that this doesn't work well enough, you can also increase the subdivision level in Character Creator. In this render, you can see another example of an unnaturally jagged high contrast shadow on this skirt. What we can do to fix that is go into our Scene Manager, select the skirt, and then activate Subdivision. You'll notice right away that the mesh of the skirt becomes more detailed, and as a result the shadow is restored to a more natural appearance. Next, let's talk a bit about performance enhancement. There are a number of different features which really take up a lot of system resources like subsurface scattering, GI bounce, and caustics. In this simple comparison, you can see that a render using subsurface scattering and caustics will take a good percentage longer to finish rendering than our original. In hardware settings, you can determine the number of resources that your system will use for renders. You can see that we're running a pretty hefty machine here, and we're basically firing on all cylinders, as we have both video cards selected and the maximum available number of cores. If you're running an older machine and you find that things are lagging a bit, the easiest way to get better performance is to disable the viewport global illumination. This won't affect the final render with iRay, only what you see in the preview window. In addition, high resolution textures can sometimes drag down performance, so you can fix that by going into your preferences and setting the max texture size down to the minimal amount in the real-time render options. 
Again, keep in mind that this won't affect your final iRay render, only what you see in the viewport, which is your real-time render. If you want to work on other things while you're waiting for your renders to finish, you might want to consider the background render option. There is a dedicated button in the render settings panel beside the preview one at the bottom. Here you can choose your final render settings and then just select render to get things on their way. While the render is running in the background, you can then adjust the amount of resources it's using in the hardware settings panel, which brings up the same options as you saw previously. If you want, you can set the number of cores doing the rendering work to a lower number so you can still use Character Creator unfettered while your masterpiece renders in the background. We can now operate like normally. For example, we can change this leather jacket to a white one by simply adjusting the brightness of the base color map. Notice that Character Creator will still operate normally with the render running in the background. That's really all there is to talk about with basic render settings. Hopefully you've learned something from this tutorial, and I hope to see you in our other videos and on our forums over at forum.reillusion.com.